Hi modelers, it's Chris, the modeler at AVR Model Works. This video is the first of our new vlog series, Building AVR Lines. These videos will also include how-tos on building with and using our products. So in this video, we're going to start with building our first baseboard. It's going to be used to show off some of our building kits and some of our 3D scenic parts. Now this baseboard is going to be 2.7 metres long. So it's going to be made from two of our 1300 by 600 mil baseboard kits. Now this is one of those kits here and it includes three 450 by 600 tops and the sides to go with them and the internal bracing. Additionally, because it's a kit, it comes with the leg clamps, the U-clamps for joining the baseboards together the bracing for the U-clamps and the cross bracing to stiffen up the baseboard itself. Okay, so we're going to start assembling the baseboard pieces themselves. And so this is one 600 by 450 baseboard and we're going to be joining three of these together to make up the first module and then another three to make up the second module which will give us our 2.7 long diorama. So now, as I said before, here are one of the kits. This kit includes the parts for three of the baseboards and we're gonna be assembling two of these kits. So let's get started with that now. So now we're going to start gluing things together. So there's a few things that you need. I like to use the Deluxe Materials Alphatic Glue. It's a resin glue and it completely dries and is water resistant which is really important. Um, I've got a homemade sanding block, it's just a piece of pine chamfered on the end with some sandpaper glued to it. You can use some of the sponges etc but the disadvantage with the sponge is that as you're sliding over one tab to the next they tend to sort of jam up. So a longer sanding block is ideal for, uh, for this job. Uh, some masking tape. The other thing that, that is helpful to have it's just a soft-ended mallet um, or a hammer, uh, just in case you get something that just jams a little bit when you're putting one of the pieces together, and you might just need to sort of you know, tap it home. So I have that handy, um, but if you've sanded these tabs well, um, they'll just slot in and it won't be a problem. But nevertheless, if it's here handy, um, you're not going to get yourself stuck and ruin one of the baseboards. Now you're going to need a flat surface to work on. And to protect it, what I've done is I put some cling wrap down so that when I'm gluing things, the uh, baseboard's not going to glue itself to my workbench here. So what I like to do is set up a little bit of an assembly line. These side pieces go on last, so we'll put those off to one side. The centre braces are what we're going to put on first, and then the tops. Now when you're assembling, you'll see that the internal bracing has slots in them and they go opposite each other so that the baseboard clips together. What you do first of all is you glue the 450 wide ones or rather on any baseboard the ones with the slot at the top and then when you've got those in place, regardless of how large the baseboard is, in this case it's three, we then put the longer one up in that has the slot in the bottom and you put that across so that you end up with uh, the grid um, with the supports underneath like we have here. Now the, these are uh, cut with reasonably tight tolerances but they do go together. What you need to do first of all before you start gluing anything is grab a sanding block. Now I've just got a, a little piece of pine here that uh, I've glued some sandpaper to and we need to just put a chamfer on these uh, little tongues so that they will slide into their spots uh, easily. They do go in as you can see, those ones just about dropping in but the problem is if you burr these little tags you'll have a hell of a job getting it in once you've got glue on there. 
So you need to sand that back and test fit. So I'm going to go ahead now and uh, simply just hang it off the edge of the bed and give them a sand like so on all of the internal pieces. You need to do both sides. Okay, so I've now put a chamfer on these tabs that are part of the bracing underneath and what I'm going to do next is test fit them. So it's just really a simple case of, of uh, popping them in, making sure that they go in all the way down. Sometimes they take a little bit of wiggling to line up, other times they drop straight in. And the same with the cross bracing. There we go, simple as that. Now, a tip. Now you've got those together like that, what you want to do is pull them apart in such a way that you know what order they were in. That way, when you glue them and slide them together, you're putting them back in the same spot. So, let's get started. Now, gluing is really straightforward. Put a little bit of a glue line between each of the slots. You want enough so it gets a bead and spreads, but don't overdo it. And then on the surface of these tabs, that's it, push it down with your finger, wipe away the excess. That also just gives you a little bit of a, a glue fillet. Not that that's important. You, don't, you want enough glue that it's going to hold it and be strong, but not too much that it will get in the way when you're putting other parts together. Okay, as you can see, I've glued this together. I've actually done two of them. It's a very straightforward and simple process um, that anybody can do. A uh, couple of things. Once you start to see that glue has got some nice uh, dry areas on the surface, they become you know, certainly strong enough to, uh, to handle. Okay, so I now have the six modules with the internal bracing ribs all glued in place. Plus I've also done a 300 by 600 which is going to go on one of the ends. So I'll put this one off to one side. And what we're going to do now is glue on the uh, side pieces. So this is the same as before, it's just a case of simply putting some glue on the tabs, same on the baseboard etc and on the bracing ribs and then when you pop it up in place you then get some masking tape to hold it up like so while the glue dries and we do it on the on the tops as well. Okay so let's get on with it. <clears throat> Now the masking tape is just simply there to pull the surfaces together because the tighter the surfaces are together, the stronger the glue joint will be. So put a little bit of tape on, give it a bit of a tug to get the tension there. And then we sand it on its side and start in the middle the tape and pull it tight so that the joint is clamped down and just go along doing the same thing. Now once you've got it on just check to see that you've got the alignment right and that it's actually pulled together nice and tight that way you'll have a good joint and it'll be nice and strong. So that's basically it and all we'll do now is just keep working our way around. Okay, now that looks good, it's nice and tight. Now it's really important to get all the outside surfaces um, nice and tight as far as the joint's concerned for two key reasons. One is the tighter it is the stronger it's going to be. The second one is when you're going to join one baseboard to another you want this surface to be flat. If you haven't got it 
pulled up tight all the way along and it's got a little bit of a bow in it then of course that's going to be noticeable when you bolt it to the next one. Now the other thing that you need to take into consideration at this stage as well but now in this case I'm going to be glue three of them on the 600mm side and part of that process involves using these U-clamps that go in. So you need to make sure that you don't have too much glue in the corners at each of these spots or rather not going to be glued together so this is not so much for the bolting it's for the gluing on the ends where it's going to be bolted together there are these internal supports that stiffen up the ends as well so again you need to make sure there's not a bead of glue there stopping these supports being able to be glued up flush with the face Okay, so there we have all the sides on, all done, etc. Now, we're at this stage, what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue in these extra braces. So what we do at the ends where we're bolting it together, we put an extra piece of material in the corners and in each of the ribs and that gives these joints uh, extra surface area for the glue. Where I'm going to put my leg is I'm going to put it in this corner and we also want to uh, put a brace in there as well. Okay so I'm now going to let this uh, dry up for about half an hour then I can take these clamps off and do the other corner. Okay, so it's now dry enough to take the clamps off. And as you can see, we've doubled up the thickness of the material in the corner here. And we're going to mirror this on the other side as well. And of course, this module is bolted to the next module. And that's what this extra thickness is here for, to really stiffen this area up. And we put our bolts in. And the same thing, we're stiffening this area up for the leg. So this module and this module are going to be glued together and to strengthen this glue joint what we're doing is we're putting a U-clamp at the joint area each one and then we're putting this additional brace that goes across the top and adds the load out across the two so that this becomes quite stiff and strong. And our leg bracket bolts in to that area there. So that's basically how we stiffen the, uh, the baseboard up to allow it to be both stiff and uh, hold a reasonable amount of weight. Okay, so what we're going to do next is we're going to glue these three baseboards to make a 1350 long baseboard. And uh, the way I'm going to do that is I'll just move this one out of the way for the moment. We're going to smear some glue across this surface, put it together, give it a bit of a rub, and then we'll bolt it all up and uh, move on and do the, the next one as well. So let's get the glue and get started. Okay, so next we'll slide it up and just rub it backwards and forwards that'll smear the glue across the surface and then I just make sure I feel it's good enough that the two faces here are parallel and then we'll just grab some bolts washers now I've got one in the center I'll do one either side and then the rest don't matter really what order they go in now depending on the part of the world that you're in the washers that I'm using are uh, what's called mudguard washers 
but they have a six mil hole in the middle and about 25 mil, so about an inch. And when you bolt them together as a set, just the three is enough because really all you're doing is making sure they don't move this way when the railway's running because the legs will give you the height and when you bolt them together it's just making sure the two baseboards stay in line with each other. Okay, so that's nicely bolted up. The nice flat surface, everything makes up how I expect it. Okay, so I've now got all the pieces laying on the baseboard that it provides the um, support underneath. So we've got our U-clamps and the brace for the U-clamp and we've got our cross braces. The cross braces won't be fitted at this stage because you need to be able to get into the baseboard to do points and electrical work etc. So they'll be left off until such time as the track is laid uh, and the wiring is done. Um, just general wiring for lighting and things like that, that's not really much of a problem that's easy to do, but things like wiring up the point motors and connecting them to the points um, can be a little bit fiddly, so you want the space. So we'll remove these, and as you can see, that opens up the bottom of the baseboard quite a lot. Uh, these clamps get pushed down and uh, this piece gets glued in and along the top edge. You'd be surprised how much extra strength that will provide. So that's what we're going to do now. The leg brackets are just sitting in place just to show you basically where they're going to go. But we'll remove those for the time being and we'll get this job um, done. Now the most important part of this process in putting these in place is that the face that it's going to go on it needs to be you know, nice and, and uh, flat so that you can get a good glue contact. If you don't do that it uh, doesn't really add a lot of extra strength. So I've made sure that I've got no large fillets of glue stopping it from going down and uh, we're just going to Put a little bit of glue down either side. And slide it, push it into place. Put a couple of clamps on it for a few minutes to let that dry up and um, move on to the next one. So I've glued this outer one in place but I feel I should point out a couple of things about these that are pretty straightforward but nevertheless. So first of all, the outer ones line up flush with the outside edge. So when you glue the uh, strip brace on, if you glue it on the same side as the uh, U-joiner, then it will line up with that edge. But if you put it on the reverse side, what it will be is roughly in the center of this, which will give you slightly more strength. Now obviously on the outside we need it to line up with the edge because you don't want to hang over that, but the three center ones, we put it that way. And like everything else, a little bit of glue, just run a, a bead along the top edge here, a little bit either side on the cross, doesn't matter if you go a little bit too, too far. Then we just grab a bit of tape to both hold it down to give you a good strong joint and to keep it lined up. Okay, so as you can see I now have my two main modules put together. The only thing left to do on them is the cross bracing and I'm going to cover that in the next video. So they are 1350 mil long, so just under four and a half feet. So together they're just under 9 feet long 
and I have the two end modules which are my runoff modules so these are 300 mil wide or approximately a foot so that's what we've got done so far now to give you some idea on how long this took I did pretty much all of this work in one day and shot the video so I could quite easily complete a project like this in a day if you're using a good quality glue and you've got a few clamps as well so um, in addition to the other tools I've already spoken about a couple of clamps are very handy um, I have uh, 10 of this style of clamp um, which are fairly strong but if you don't have that you can still get away with just using the masking tape and uh, it just take a little bit longer because you'll need to wait for more things to set up and dry so now the other thing that I just wanted to demonstrate at this stage is they are still very light so I can pick up a 3.3 meter long baseboard without the legs so that's pretty good I'm gonna weigh it in a second so you can so we can see just how heavy it really is okay I now have the whole baseboard resting on some scales including the two off runoffs at the end so that's a 3.3 meter long layout and it comes in at 11.9 kilograms just under 12 kilograms so that's you know nice and light and on the pounds it is 26 pounds so again um, it's a very light structure for such a large baseboard so the weight of the baseboard in itself also now meets one of the criteria that we set for it that it would be easily manageable by one or two people to move it around now in the next video I'm also going to cover making these 45 degree corner pieces so and also at the same time show you a couple of different ways of using them but uh, this is what we'll be using and a group of other modules to make up uh, run around in and uh, we'll also be using it for increasing the width um, of a module uh, or having some uh, siding or whatever coming off at an angle so that's in the next release uh, as, lot, as well as the uh, cross bracing so I hope you enjoyed our first vlog it's been a bit of fun making it and I'm really excited to be at this stage now of actually starting to build a railway again um, it's been a it's been nearly two years since I've been able to do some real serious modelling from my own point of view. So uh, I'm um, really quite excited about that. So stay tuned. We've got a couple of more videos to go on the building of the baseboard, and uh, which is the foundations obviously for the railway. And then we're going to get into the track design and uh, some mock-up buildings and then building some buildings and laying track and getting on with the whole thing. Uh, including the uh, wiring uh, for the Fremo system that we're working on and at the same time uh, doing all those little fiddly things that people have obviously pointed out as to how you're going to make you know, your points work and all that type of thing. So there's quite a few little how-to sessions, um, some great um, models that we're planning to make to go into the scene and, uh, and a whole bunch of, of uh, uh, scenery type techniques um, weathering and all that sort of thing so um, stay tuned I'm Chris the modeler at ABR model works have a great day modeling and thanks for watching and by the way it is Christmas coming up so have a happy Christmas and a fantastic new year and um, we'll see you in the up-and-coming videos and please subscribe and ring the bell <music>